Hello. I'm starting off with a zoomed in close up of this background material because this was prepared by going outside into extremely cold weather and um, I'll turn this around a little bit so you can see some of this and pouring paint onto the paper in a tilted position and then leaving it for a day on my porch, covered porch, so it could dry. And in that time, some beautiful ice crystals were formed in the paint. And so the painting that we're going to do today is to indicate this image of a man in the middle of this ice crystal background. <clears throat> now, it's just going to be, the man is not going to take on a lot of color. I'm planning that he is going to be done in just um, a neutral tone because there's quite a lot of color in the in the crystals and I don't want to distract from that by adding texture or color to indicate his um, features. So uh, it's, it's planned to be a very quick painting. Um, I studied the, I did about 30 of these pieces of paper to see how they would turn out. And what I'm going to do is um, take some Payne's Gray and mix it with some cerulean blue to make a, um, a bluish, a very bluish Payne's Gray. And basically it will be like a value painting. I've already done some sketching and so I'm just going to paint in some of those shadows and blend them a little bit on the edges. And I'm going to focus on medium values at this point. I didn't think too dark. I can always go darker. But I am pretty much following my very detailed sketch, but I, I plan I'm have plans to change it a bit. So but let's start that process. I want it to be um, he, like he's just kind of mystically coming out through this veil of ice crystals. So I want his the feeling from him to be kind of intense and mysterious. So I'm hoping that I'll be able to achieve that. I want him to look strong and intelligent and as he emerges. So I'm going to leave some of his features unfinished, but just enough indication 
I have to, maybe a bit more than the sketch, maybe a little less. Not sure at this point. There's a beautiful crystal here. I'm not going to cover it up because it's just too lovely. So I'll just soften the edge there. I can always come back and add more later, but for now I don't really want to uh, cover up that that crystal that's there, but we'll see. Maybe I might if it looks too freaky. I don't want him to look like the Phantom of the Opera with <laughs> a disfigured face just like an extraordinary man emerging from this, this crystal structure. It's so beautiful to see what the watercolor can do sometimes when you just leave it alone and, um, and then help it along a little bit to try to make some kind of complementary painting from that. You don't have a lot of, <clears throat> you know, you don't, not sure what to paint and what to do. It's nice to have these, these um, backgrounds made and you can just look at them and see what do you see in them and um, what can you help along a little bit. been really sure what kind of hair I would give him and um, but I'll do just a few little tiny marks on the ears and go with a little smaller a little smaller pens, pen uh, paintbrush I think I even use one yeah so I'll make a little more of that color and go give some sense of the ear there and also the ear just a little indication of the ear I'm going to do the eyes a bit light for now. I can always go darker if I decide that it's not quite right. I'm basically just following my pencil drawing, which I spent a fair amount of time doing. He's not any particular person. Um, in the center, just a little bit. I don't want it to be too dark. Looks like he has pinpricks for eyes. I have to fix that. Thank you. 
put some nostrils in. <clears throat> a little bit of blue shading. Some of this shading is a little more blue, some is a little more dark with the, with the Plains Gray. Um, but it's all the same color, which is basically a mixture of blue and Payne's Gray. Um, some, sometimes a little more blue, <laughs> and sometimes a little more Payne's Gray. But this Payne's Gray that I'm using is a blue hue uh, Payne's Gray. It's not just paint, not just gray. So I think this is a little pure Payne's Gray blue hue. Put a little bit. So when I want it to go a little darker, I use less water and I also use less blue. But because the blue that I'm using is not a really dark blue, it's a cerulean. Because I like it kind of goes with the um, greenish blue that was in this pour, which I think was, uh, I used a mang manganese blue. Still not quite sure about the hair. I don't. I was envisioning a part in the center, but I think I think I will go with something more. Just come back or up. But I'm not going to make it complete. I'm going to just indicate it. Soften the edges a little bit. I shouldn't make the hair that big, a little smaller. And here I'm just going to soften the edge and let it be a bit undefined. Just almost like he's just emerging out of the mist of them, some kind of crystal cave. So I think um, the light is coming from this side. I think um, yes or no. It's more or less pretty straightforward, straight on. I'll put a little bit more blue over here. I have the light coming from the left-hand side. A more shadow here. Move 
some of this color here. Yeah. And on this side, I'm going to just take away some color. Fortunately, this is um, Canson paper, and so it's easy to lift on this paper. It's one of the things I like about it. But not all the papers let you do that. I'm going to bring in just some blue over here because even though the, the pore had a big white area there, I think um, I don't want that much white area there. So. Bring down a little bit of this original color, which is the manganese blue, and add some, but leave some of that white there. Bring a little bit of the color up here to balance the pink, even though it wasn't in the original pour. And this is the tough area, trying to decide how much definition to put in here. Okay, I'm going to leave that for a minute and um, go over to the mouth and nose. As we said, this was the shadow side, so the question is how much shadow to put in. I think a little bit more. It would make it more interesting. I have to find the right amount and not overdo it. So, as I said before, I'm only working with Payne's Gray and the um, Cerulean Blue. Some places one or the other, other places a mixture of the two.
I'm just going to make this one side of the face strong. <clears throat> Leave the other side kind of undefined. I might have to wait a little bit to have this dry in the neck. Let's see if I can make that work. up here, try to get some of that a little more strong. Soften some of the edges again, building up slowly. Less, less gray, right there, a little bit of blue, less gray, right here. some reason that edge is not working there. I'll come back to it after it's dry. So I said I would work on the mouth a little bit. So here's the shadow on the mouth. The upper lip will be in shadow on the edges. A little blue, a little bit of shadow on the blue, blue. It's light. A little bit of blue there. Too much. Move that. Okay. And again, I have to wait now for that mouth to dry before I can put any more defining line.
I may have to cover up some of that crystal. Um, I've been avoiding it up until now, but I think I may have to in order to <clears throat> not have. Maybe what I'll do is try to use a little bit of rose color. To fill in some of this space here. And then put the blue in there. Because it's just the white is not quite working. Okay, now I'll put in some blue over that. And what you always have to when you do these, use these um, crystal pores for a background. You always wind up sacrificing some crystals, ice crystals that you really don't want to lose, but. Sometimes there's no other way around it. It's a little more defined than I wanted it for the hairline. But let's see if we can get it without making it too, too precise. I think I'll have a little more dark over here. Just to emphasize again darker shadow side. Soften that edge, but just darken that nostril side compared to the other side. And then a little bit more dark in here. And then just a little detailing. darkening, just detailing. <clears throat> no more dark on this side here. And definition. This is the point where I probably should stop and let it dry. And then add some very Fine details because right now the, the little bit of fine lines that I'm putting in here are getting lost by being diffused by the, the wet paint. But that is getting close to, to a happening painting. Uh, let's see, I'm going to zoom out a bit. 
so you can see how it looks with that background. And um, we'll come back to it. I hope you're enjoying that. Well, the work has dried, and I'm going to add some more uh, value contrast to the painting. My increasing some of the darks. And, and frankly, um, I just have to be careful not to overdo this. But I just think it's too, it just doesn't have quite enough contrast in it. So <clears throat> I'm going to do a little bit and then um, let it sit again and look at it in different lights. I'm not going to worry about the outside of the ear, but just put a few darks into the crevices of the ear <clears throat> and leave the edges a bit lost. <clears throat> I love how his neck looks. I must say I'm, <clears throat> I'm absolutely in love with the strength of his neck. It's my favorite part of this painting. <clears throat> and the strength of the shoulders, but also how relaxed they are. And here, rather than go to the outside with the shadow. I'm going to focus on the inside of the shadow here. And I'm working just in the Payne's Gray right now. Just focusing on deepening a few of these shadows, trying not to overdo it. <clears throat> Now the big question is how much to put up here. Ah, this is a tough one. Because I feel like the top of his head looks just too fuzzy. Yet I don't want to 
overdo it. I'll just put a little bit over here, but not too much. And blend that in with water. I'm going to try to put enough to indicate the overall <clears throat> dimensions of his head and his hair, but not more than that. And take away a little bit of that fuzziness. The same over here. Maybe just a little bit. A little more water. Just a little bit. Really, I don't want to outline his hair, but I don't also want him to look like he's got the top of his head blowing off. So that's probably dark enough. And I would say this painting is just about done. I'm going to put a little bit of dark color in the eye because it's a little too unfinished. few shadows below. One more shading. <clears throat> and I think a very light amount of shading in the lower part of this upper lip. I'm not following any um, photo. I sketched him pretty well, um, fiddling around with dimensions. I do attend life drawing and, and um, have um, been drawing portraits for 40 years. So pretty much this is a um, made up face. But I always look at my various portrait and anatomy books and um, different photographs for basically trying to make sure that my dimensions are okay. <clears throat> Sometimes even consulting uh, some skull, skull work. I think that that is close to being done. <clears throat> I think it has just about enough value contrast to distinguish it from the middle values of the background. There's a little bit of dots here of dark color. Just put a few dots of really dark color in here again, just trying to make sure that the value contrast is enough in a few places. So I'm not going to, I'm just going to use a few dots here and there to make that happen and put the black in. Uh, over the paint scrag. 
little bit here. This cheek is so important. And this little indentation of the head here. And this neck are the key focus areas that I want to emphasize. So I'm putting a little bit of black <clears throat> to bring out the contrast of that as the focal point. I think that's it, everybody. Oh, I'm going to have to take some water and lighten that little mark here. It's a little too dark. I'll just put it in very light. I'll use, I think I'll just use blue right there. The light, the cerulean blue. Still not quite right. There's a little mark here. What's that? A oh, piece of dirt. And a little mark here from some splatter that I had put in a little bit of pink. I put a little bit of pink and orange up here <coughs> to fill in the white. Okay. I think this painting is done. Thank you for joining me.